Hello, uh, this is the second entry into my ongoing series I'm doing called The Personal Library, okay? Uh, this is a series of videos where I will be looking at not only books that I really love, but books that will carry me through the rest of my life. Uh, books that in one form or another will remain on my shelves as a, as a permanent part of my own personal library, uh, you know, Till the end of my days, okay? And uh, in the first episode, I was exploring the, the Blue Ridge Mountains of, of Annie Dillard's nature memoir, uh, Pilgrim at Tinker Creek. And today we're, we're uh, moving on to uh, fiction and uh, we're jumping over the Atlantic, straight into the Mediterranean Sea and washing up on the shores of Egypt uh, as we talk about, let's see if I can get them, uh, the Alexandria Quartet by Lawrence Durrell. Uh, these are, are four novels published between uh, 1957 and 1960. Uh, and the quartet is a work of fiction, though certainly contains heavy elements of travel memoir, as Lawrence Durrell um, wonderfully and exhaustively uh, explores the city of Alexandria, uh, as well as a handful of its inhabitants, um, within the years preceding World War II. Durrell himself described the Alexandria Quartet as an investigation of modern love. It is an intricate web of uh, adventure, romance, sex, politics, uh, murder, <laughs> uh, memory, and nostalgia. It, it, it has it all. It's a huge soap opera, and it contains a massive cast of characters, including that of an overly sentimental uh, English novelist, uh, a Greek prostitute, a whirling dervish, a transvestite police officer, uh, and, and the character of Justine, who is this kind of enigmatic prism of a character who, much like the city of Alexandria itself, appears differently depending on whose eyes we are seeing her through. The first three books of the quartet, uh, Justine, Balthazar, and Mount Olive, all offer different perspectives on the same time frame and events, uh, with only the fourth book, Clea, being a true sequel. The series is a often maddening, giant, complex onion, okay? With layer upon layer being revealed to the reader uh, as you work your way through these four books. And listen, this is an onion that has, you know, been baked in the sun, rolled in the desert sand, infused with opium smoke, and encased in white stucco. The books can be experimental in both structure and style. Uh, they can often be a bit complicated and convoluted and maybe a little bit over-sentimental. Um, but all those traits are tethered down by the most important character within all the novel, which is the city of Alexandria itself. I'll give you a, a, a short excerpt. Uh, this is from uh, Mount Olive, the, the third uh, book in the series, also my favorite. Um, but this is an example with just how descriptive and lush uh, Durrell can get, especially in regards to Alexandria. He slipped lightly downstairs into the dusky street, counting his money and smiling. It was the best hour of the day in Alexandria. The streets turned slowly in metallic blue of carbon paper, but still giving off the heat of the sun. Not all the lights were on in the town, and the large mauve parcels of dust moved here and there, blurring the outlines of everything, repainting the hard outlines of buildings and human beings in smoke. Sleepy cafes woke to the whine of mandolins, which merged in the shrilling of heated tires on the tarmac of streets now crowded with life with robed figures and scarlet dots of tar bushes. The window boxes gave off a piercing smell of slacked earth and urine. The great limousines soared away from the bourse with softly crying horns like polished flights of special geese. To be half blinded by the mauve dust, to move lightly, brushing shoulders with the throng at peace in that dry and spiriting air. These were the rare moments of happiness upon which he stumbled by chance, by accident. The pavements still retained their heat, just as watermelons did when you cut them open at dusk. A damp heat slowly leaking up through the thin soles of one's shoes. The sea winds were moving in to invest the upper town with their damp coolness. One moved through the dry air so full of static electricity, the crackle of comb in his hair, as one might swim through a tepid summer sea full of creeping cold currents. 
he walked towards Budro, slowly through little isolated patches of smell, a perfume shed by a passing woman, or the reek of jasmine from a dark archway, knowing that the damp sea air would soon blot them all out. It was the perfect moment for an aperitif in the half-light. The long wooden outer balconies, lined with potted plants, which exhaled the twilight smell of watered earth, were crowded now with human beings, half melted by the mirage into fugitive cartoons of gestures swallowed as soon as made. The colored awnings trembled faintly above the blue veils which shifted uneasily in the darkening alleys, like the very nerves of the lovers themselves who hovered there, busy on the assignations, their gestures twinkling like butterflies, full of the evening promises of Alexandria. Soon the mist would vanish and the lights would blaze up on cutlery and white cloth, on earrings and flashing jewelry, on sleek oiled heads and smiles made brilliant by their darkness, brown skin slashed by white teeth. Then the cars would begin once more to slide down the upper town with their elegant, precarious freight of diners and dancers. This was the best moment of the day. Sitting here with his back against a wooden trellis, he could gaze sleepily into the open street, unrecognized and ungreeted. Even the figures at the next table were unrecognizable, the merest outline of human beings. Their voices came lazily to him in the dusk, the mauve-veiled evening voices of Alexandrians uttering stockyard quotations of the lazy verses from Arabic love poems. Who could tell? And yeah, that language, that overly descriptive, sun-soaked, flowery prose uh, is found through all four books. Um, and it's, in my opinion, one of the most immersive worlds ever created in fiction. It's absolutely something to behold. Uh, I recently reread the Alexandria Quartet uh, this past spring when I was actually in Thailand, uh, which added a whole nother layer to the experience. And it's a book that I know I'll continue to come back to in the future, and it's a series that I, I, I still have a lot to get out of, I know, uh, which is always exciting. And um, yeah, just looking at these on my shelves, um, I know it sounds kind of corny, but you know, you can, you can smell and you can taste and you can hear Alexandria uh, just by looking at them. Um, and, and no matter how real or not, that is to, to the real Alexandria, it doesn't matter because what Durrell achieves within these four books uh, is an incredible feat within fiction. Uh, now and forever, always within my own personal library, the Alexandria Quartet, Lawrence Durrell. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.